Welcome back, everybody. Passage to Profit with Richard and Elizabeth Gerhardt and our special guest this evening, Mike Duffy. So Mike is a happiness coach, I guess, happiness connoisseur. Uh, and we're so happy to have him on the show. So welcome to the show, Mike. Well, thank you very much. You know, I, I love your show. Uh, and yeah, I have been in the field of happiness for 10 years now. Uh, and uh, I've written five books on happiness. And I think that happiness needs to be in everybody's conscience on a daily basis. So Mike, your book, well, what, one thing you do is happiness and wealth management. So mm -hmm. I kind of feel like sometimes money can make you happy. <laughs> what do you think about that? Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, shopping makes many pe people happy. The thing is, it's not sustainable. So you want to have sustainable happiness. Now, how do you do that? Well, I have a, fa a happiness formula. It's P plus P equals H. Purpose plus progress equals happiness. And that will sustain happiness throughout your life. So I really think that that's a, a unique approach. I did see that in one of your uh, videos before the uh, I viewed before the show and the, the PPH really rang true to me because I think progress, making progress is what is what is most satisfying. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I've been in financial services for 30 years now. I have my own firm, Happiness Wealth Management. So I work with people with money. And I can tell you they're no different than people without money for the most part. But what I say to them is, when the first time I meet them, I say, what makes you happy and how can we get more of that? So we write it down. You know, Benjamin Franklin said that 1% of the people are successful because only 1% of the people write down their goals. Now, that's great advice. And I... I'm a prodigious goal writer mm -hmm. and planner myself, and it, it does seem to create a, a, a magic that if you write it down yes. somehow, some way, it's more likely to happen. Absolutely. And the other thing that people need to understand is that great happiness comes through giving, right? St. Augustine said that it's in giving that we receive. Now, think about it in your own life. When somebody gives you a present, that's nice. But when you give somebody a special present and their face lights up, it means 10 times more than receiving that present. It really is true. And, you know, the old adage, it's better to give than to receive I, is actually supposed to be. It's better to be in a position to give than to be in a position to have to receive. And it does make me feel good when I can help somebody. We had an episode where somebody came on with a charity after the show, they talked about a charity and we decided to support it because it was so important. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is in my position as helping people steward their wealth, I show them ways where they can be more effective in giving like through a donor advice fund. You've got highly appreciated stock and you want to give, why give it with after tax money? Put that highly appreciated stock into a donor advised fund, and then you can sell it, get the tax write off, and you have more money to give. It's beautiful. Right. I wasn't aware that those things existed. So, thank how did, how did, <laughs> how did, how did, how did <laughs> Otherwise, this last donation may have uh, occurred in that manner. So, tell me a little bit about um, tell me a, a little bit about how to set one of these funds up and and it's what's very necessary. simple it's very simple and you don't need to have a lot of money you know I think that the smallest one you can start with about a thousand dollars twenty five hundred dollars so it's not for the ultra wealthy it's available to everybody and so you know if you if you've got questions about that you can go to happinesswealthmanagement.com I've got answers on that or you can just drop me a line Great. So, so what got you interested in the world of happiness? Well, I have to put my head into the lion's mouth of bad news on a second by second basis as a wealth manager. I need to know where the markets are moving so I can set up the allocation for my folks to make money. So I said, you know what? I need to come up with an antidote for all of this bad news. So I started the Happiness Hall of Fame. And, and so is that for you personally, is that, or is that, I mean, how does that, how does that create 
sort of solve the problem that you were dealing with? Well, basically, I've created like a Justice League of some of the most amazing people in the world, you know, uh, and, and I have the ability. So, for example, Mark Victor Hansen has become a friend of mine. He is the co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. Right. So I, you know, during COVID, I gave him a call. I said, how are you handling COVID? I go on these virtual talk shows and things and, you know, people want to know how they can be happy in COVID. So that's why I started it so that I could bring great information to folks. Well, that sounds like a great idea. Who else is in the happiness hall of fame? I know, I know where the New York giants are, but who (laughs) else is, who else is in? Well, well, okay. So you know that I'm going to have my favorites, right? So Dolly Parton is in the Happiness Hall of Fame. And every year at Stanford University, where I've taught classes on happiness, we have a big induction ceremony. And she couldn't make it. uh, But she sent me a great video. And if you go to happinesshalloffame.com, you will see wonderful people and wonderful videos of some amazing people and organizations, by the way. So Make-A-Wish is in there. Ronald McDonald House, the Wounded Warrior Project. We had an amazing uh, wounded warrior come out who had lost his legs. And out of all of the standing ovations that I've witnessed over the years, this man had a five minute standing ovation. So you can learn from all of the people that are on this website. Well, I think you bring up a really good point. All of us have had terrible things happen to us in our lives. I, I don't care who you are, you know. Yes. Well, um, you, you have? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you never told me about these things. <laughs> we, we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> but, but people can be happy regardless if they choose to, right? Absolutely. So I always talk about resiliency. Resiliency is a secret weapon that you can have in your arsenal to stay happy. Now, what does that mean? When something bad happens, you can say, this situation contaminated me. It hurt me permanently. That's where most people fall. However, I tell people, turn it around. Say, this situation happened for me. I am better and stronger as a result of this. I'm a silver linings guy. You know, sometimes the worst things that can happen to you can just be a setup for a comeback and you learn valuable experience as a result. I think that's great advice. And I, I, I think that people who are happier tend to look more toward the future and look forward and are able to let go of the negativity that happened, uh, look at it learn from it, and then just stay focused on the future because you can't fix the past. And if you carry all of those things around with you, then um, you're only hurting yourself, right? And and so- Absolutely, absolutely. You know, my recent inductee into the hall is Dr. Kevin Elko, and he's got a great saying. And he has won 30 championships through college and professional football as a sports psychologist. Works with Nick Saban over the years, Philadelphia Eagles, and his saying, so what, now what? Stuff's always going to happen to you. So if you're armed with so what, now what? What do we do in the future, right? Bob Dylan said, life is not about finding yourself. It's about creating yourself. Who do you want to be? Make it happen. You can do it. Well, I think the other thing is, why is happiness important? Well, there are really two reasons, I think, main reasons. One is it because it's because it keeps you healthier overall, mentally and physically. But the other, and I don't know, maybe this is even a little more important, is people want to be around you if you're a happy yes. person. Yes. <laughs> Which Absolutely. is sometimes lawyers don't have any friends because, you know, I'm not pointing to myself here, but. Who wants to go out to lunch with a sad sack, right? <laughs> Okay, that is, Elizabeth, that's a fantastic point. We want to be the person that people are attracted to. Happiness gives you power. As all the entrepreneurs that are listening right now, you have to be positive. You can't get up in front of angel investors and say, I think this is going to work. I'm not so certain, right? You can't be Jackie Mason, the great Jackie Mason. Oh, it could be this. No, you have to have confidence in yourself. You have to know that whatever happens in your life, 
that happiness, that resiliency, this positive energy is going to get you through to solve any problem. Right. Right. So you mentioned a formula for defining happiness, but I kind of think that happiness is a feeling, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's kind of an elation, right? Is, is that how you view happiness or do you view happiness as more sort of satisfaction, right? And, and the two are kind of related. So, you know, joy versus satisfaction, happiness, where, where does it fall in among all those different pieces? I define happiness as contented excitement. You have to understand we only have so many days in our life. Why are you sitting around in your own pity party that nobody wants to join? <laughs> Why not create something, create a legacy, bless people, be happy that you have conscious thought that you're on the right side of the ground. This is not a dress <laughs> rehearsal. Come on, people. No. So Mike, if you find yourself in the doldrums or somebody has like really torn you apart or something, how do you bring yourself back? You know what? I have my goals written down. I have things to do. I have a homeless outreach. I have friends on the street that count on me. I need to show up every day for them, right? I'm that smile. I may be their only friend in the entire world. So I can't let something that somebody said about me get me down. I got places to go. Got it. So your purpose is bigger than anything that could try to pull you away is what you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. I have children. We have a moral obligation if you're in a family to be happy for your children and to be happy for the people that love you. It's not, you know, happiness is a choice on a second by second basis. I always make the choice to be happy. That's great. That's great. I, um, I, well, I'm feeling happy now. So thank you for coming on the show. You can do it. You've made my day. I mean, this is great. <laughs> so anyway, um, we have to move on to a commercial to make our sponsors happy. But before we do, Mike, where can you be reached and how can people connect with you? Well, if you're looking for a financial advisor that's going to focus on your happiness, that's what separates me from everybody. Go to happinesswealthmanagement.com. And, and will your clients be happy even if they lose a little money once in a while? <laughs> well, look, the markets go up and down, but over time, if you buy quality, you're going to make money. Well, I guess I'd rather... I'd rather have a happy inv uh, investor partner than an unhappy one, right? Agreed. So, and an optimist instead of a pessimist. So that mm -hmm. sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, you're listening to Passage to Profit and we're having a very happy moment and we'll be back after this happy moment uh, on WOR 710, the voice of New York. <laughs> <laughs> 